guys, this is Animat, and welcome back to the Muppet Vlog. Now this time we're going to be looking into episode 5 of season 3 of The Muppet Show, which features the one and only Pearl Bailey. Now to have you guys a bit more familiar about who Pearl Bailey is, she is an African American actress of both stage and screen, and a very prominent one as well. Not only appearing in numerous Broadway shows, but she even won a Tony Award for her performance in Hello Dolly back in 1968 and on top of that she even won an Emmy Award for playing the role of fairy godmother in the ABC special Cindy Eller a modern fairy tale now for those of you who want to know about what she has done if if there's any more familiar roles that you, some of you might actually remember well she actually did provide the voice of Big Mama the owl in Disney's the Fox and the Hound and on top of that, her name was actually given to the high school in Seth MacFarlane's American Dad. So, she has been pretty well known. And on top of that, uh, one more thing I would like to add is that she is also a very prominent singer. Both of, especially of jazz. Definitely a wonderful singer, wonderful actress. Just all about her is nothing but wonderful. And going into the episode that she appeared in, it was actually quite interesting, I might add. Um, like, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's one of the better episodes, but it's not bad either. It's a rather interesting mix, I must say. Now, one of the better portions about this episode is more about the backstory. Now, what's happening so far is that Kermit really wanted to do a music, uh, like this special number that's from Camelot, and he wanted to go and recreate the jousting scene. Now the problem with that is that there are some people who aren't really into it, like Floyd has to play one of the knights, and pretty much he has to wear this suit of armor that's just way too heavy, way too uncomfortable, he's not really digging it per se. And throughout the whole time, Kermit has been facing with some other complications with the scene as well. Specifically that he is not allowed to use the music from Camelot, so he was thinking about canceling it, but a lot of the others, except for Floyd, were very adamant to have that scene actually happen. So I will get into that specific, like, into that Camelot uh, number in a bit. But first, uh, let me just go into some of the other segments and like the other parts that if it doesn't have to do with the Camelot scene or with Pearl Bailey, they're not necessarily as strong. Like the, the most I could say is that at best like you will get a few chuckles but they can end up being pretty weird. Uh, what I mean by that is that there are some numbers like uh, the Muppet Labs bit or even with Pigs in Space. Like, they got some pretty, like, they're not fully out there, but, you know, it's just like little silly numbers. That That's the best way to describe it. Like, rather it be just the small edible paper clips at Muppet Labs or the snackle waves and pigs in space that turns everybody into, like, that it turns their heads into food or, or like, just like a vegetable or something like that. But, yeah, it, it's not necessarily the best, but it does get, like... I don't know, it's a little bit weird. And on top of like a few other bits, like of course you got uh, like the quick funny moments with Muppet News and you also got the uh, like more of a random assortments of like dumb gags in uh, the at the dance sequence. But the one thing that I will have to say, the weirdest element that I was not expecting, it was actually uh, they replayed High Diddly D. Now this was something that they've already done in the first episode of season three, where you have Fozzie Bear and Rolf singing uh, High Diddly D from Disney's Pinocchio. And um, now this is not the first time that they recycled this um, old bit, uh, like where they would recycle a sketch from a previous episode and they would, uh, you know, re-air it on a different one. And coincidentally enough, it was another one with Fozzie Bear and Rolf playing on the piano. But with this one, that, like, beforehand, I kind of felt like, you know, like I had a bit of a suspicion. It's like, haven't I seen this before? This one, however, that I know I've seen it before, especially from a short span, like from episode one, and then already we're in episode five, like, they're already re-airing 
uh, an actor's life for me, which I honestly find kind of weird. I don't know the reason why, and even looking into the uh, like the order of when it aired on TV, it was actually legit one right after another. Like the Pearl Bailey episode was on first, and then right afterwards it was the Chris Christopherson and Rita Coolidge bit. So at that point, like you got. To, like, you, you pretty much get, one, like, one week after another of high diddly D. It was kind of, I don't know, I just find it to be kind of weird that they would suddenly just do this um, whole recycling bit. That I don't know. But, uh, going back to some of the good parts about this episode, of course we got Pearl Bailey. And in this one, she truly was the highlight, possibly the best thing about this episode, is that Pearl Bailey would come in and she would perform what she does best. Uh, rather it be singing jazz, like like she would do like a small little duet with uh, uh, with Floyd singing uh, in the good old summertime, or she would sing like this, um, I don't know how to say it, like I, I don't want to say preachy, but like kind of like a, a bit of a, ch a church song, like uh, my soul is a witness, so uh, like it, and it even gives a bit of that church setting. Uh, but finally, the biggest thing was actually at the end, the jousting scene in Camelot. And what they pretty much did is that since they're not allowed to actually use songs from Camelot, they actually just used many different kinds of broad Broadway songs. Uh, rather it be the Muppets singing it, or they even brought in per uh, Pearl Bailey singing. Uh, honestly, I feel like this is actually a pretty good finale. This is actually one of the better finales in the show because they actually build it up that this is going on and what ends up happening is like you got a different assortment of so many different bro uh, like Broadway songs uh, singing songs like uh, Ascot, uh, Gavodi, Hello Dolly, uh, Fugu for Tin Horns, Anything You Can Do, A Boy Like That and everything coming out roses so you kinda got this variety of Broadway shows all mashed up into one with uh, a bit of a Camelot setting. This hasn't been done before since the Ethel Merman bit, which I will admit, the Ethel Merman one was a bit better because that you can fully get the feeling of broad, uh, like this has the massive Broadway tone, but with this one like you kinda got like this random jumbled up bit, which to, to its credit, like, that's kind of the whole purpose of it. Like, that's how they entirely set it up. But, uh, still, it was a fun bit. It definitely was good. And, uh, of course, like, just through everything with both Pearl Bailey and the entire Camelot bit, uh, like, especially with the backstory, it does come with uh, a lot of good gags. And those are pretty much the highlights of, uh, this episode. So, overall, I would say that... This is not one of the best episodes that I've seen of The Muppet Show, but this is definitely good. Uh, the weaker elements are absolutely some of the other bits that don't really have to do anything that they could just throw into any other episode. They just, they're not necessarily the strongest moments that I've seen of either like Muppet Labs or Pigs in Space or even at the dance. But, uh, I will say, it's still enjoyable to say the least, at, uh, especially with the entire Camelot bit, how they try to set up that entire story, especially with the elements of how Kermit can't use songs for Camelot, or especially with Floyd when he has to wear that heavy suit of armor, and especially with Pearl Bailey just prominently displaying what she does best, singing Broadway songs, singing jazz songs, with uh, an astounding voice like her, and plus the fact that she can be pretty funny at the same time. So, uh, definitely a great display of her talents, both as a singer and an actress. So, uh, is it the best episode that I've seen? No. But is it a bad episode? Not really. This is a pretty good, enjoyable episode that might have a few flaws. There's not, uh, like, not everything in here necessarily clicks, but... It's still pretty good, and I do recommend that you would definitely check out uh, some of the moments with Pearl Bailey, or, like, I would even recommend checking out the whole jousting scene. If you are a Broadway fan, then this is probably for you. Like, definitely go and check out the whole Camelot bit, 
and uh, I'm sure you'll have as much of a great time as you would with the Ethel Merman episode. So anyways, that is pretty much going to be it with this episode of the Muppet Vlog, so I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, we'll see how well coordinated that the next episode will be, and hopefully it's not just going to be the special guest star and the backstory that will be the highlight of the whole episode. Hopefully everything will work on it. So, uh, once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, see you later, dudes! Thank you.